Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jose Kua, and uh, in this video, I'm going to show you some basic lighting tips inside of ZBrush. So, um, for the material, nothing special, just the basic material, and you can find that uh, towards the right side of the flat color, right in your material menu. And the only difference there is that I turn up the wax setting to around 40 and this is to somewhat fake the uh, subsurface scattering effect so what I'm getting is a bit of warmness in the shadows so for this to take effect you have to go to your render settings and turn on the wax preview so you can see that again once I turned it on and off you can see the warmness uh, toggling on and off so that's kind of the effect that I want um, for this render okay So let's get into the light settings. So nothing spectacular in here. Uh, I usually uh, don't play around with uh, too many of the features here. I've kind of found what I feel works for me, so I usually stick to that. So um, for the purpose of uh, you know these renders, I'll usually just stick to one light um, for each pass and composite everything inside of Photoshop. So for all of them, uh, I like to keep the ambient zero and the shadows on. Right and uh, the light types are always the sun type I've never really found the need to play around with the other types uh, this is kinda given me the result that uh, I'm pretty happy with go to your render menu and scroll down to the BPR shadow tab okay so now let's get into the settings All right um, I'm gonna switch it back to uh, what's usually on by default and show you guys uh, the effect that we're getting Okay, so by right, this is the effect that we're getting. Uh, ambient occlusion is turned on, so um, in combination of all the sharp shadows, we are getting a bit of softness. So you can see the difference with it on and off. Right, so it's a very slight difference, but it does make a difference in my opinion. Uh, so I usually like to keep that on. Right, and uh, the next thing I like to play around with are the rays and the angle and so in combination what these do is they give you uh, a softer shadow so by right by just uh, changing up the ray settings you're not going to get any um, any difference okay it usually has to be used in combination with the angle so uh, the angle sort of softens up the shadow and the rays um, kind of increase the resolution in that so by default um, if I just uh, bump up the angle and leave the rays low, what you're going to get is some banding, which isn't a very ideal result. It doesn't look very good. So ideally what we want to do is uh, to soften this up. So in order to do that, we need to bump up the rays. And this should give us uh, a better resolution and uh, give us a nicer result in the end. After you render, it should look something like this. So you probably want to adjust the rays uh, depending on uh, how much banding you're getting right so but I found around 100 to 150 is a pretty good sweet spot okay so this is gonna be our first pass and the next thing I'm gonna do is export those so just go to render pass BPR render pass and click on the icon that you want to export so um, I'm gonna export the what we see on screen so this by right would be just the beauty render and uh, yeah I don't really like the naming convention that's giving me so I, I usually come up with my own name so I'll just call this uh, beauty okay so that I it's easy for me to recognize and I'll render out all of these I'm not going to use them um, for this video but I usually like to keep them just in case uh, I want to use these to enhance uh, the render. So um, ideally, what I would be using is just the beauty pass and the ambient occlusion, right? So uh, next thing I'm going to do is add a bit of a rim light, right? So by default, you know the lights are going to be in front, and there's going to be a limitation to how far uh, to the side you can move them. So you know this is how far I can move the rim light. Uh, Ideally, I'd want them just to be uh, touching the contour of the model. So um, this isn't the ideal effect for me. So in order to move it even more towards the back, you got to click twice and uh, just play around with moving the orange dot. OK, 
Okay, so as you can see, I can move it directly towards the rim, right? The, the circle in the light menu gives us a good preview of what's going to happen. Okay, so you know, I, I do like to keep the intensity pretty strong, but I don't want to blow up the whites too much because, uh, again, when you have something that's completely white, uh, it's not going to give you so much uh, information to play around with in Photoshop. So I want to keep some of the subtle gradients on. Um, and I'm going to render two passes for the rim. So one for the uh, more of like the subtle fall off, right? And I'll usually uh, reduce the intensity for that. And so, you know, this is working pretty well for me. Um, one thing that uh, I forgot to turn on was the shadow setting. So you can see how, you know, light is hitting where it shouldn't be hitting based off of where uh, it's located. Um, so again, uh, it's acting a little bit like a directional light in your traditional uh, 3D app, and it's not a very real realistic effect. So um, what you want to do is uh, turn on the shadow setting so you won't get lights in areas like the, the mouth, which should be completely covered. You know, It doesn't make sense for the rim light to reach all the way there if it's coming from the back. So I'm going to turn it on. It's going to take a little bit longer to uh, process, but uh, you're going to get a much more realistic effect. Yep, pretty happy with this. And uh, I'm going to export this for my first uh, render pass. And uh, I'm going to call this uh, rim A1. Right, and I'm going to render out my second uh, second rim light. Yeah, so for this one, I really want to push it towards the sides, and I'm going to increase the intensity. So something like this is going to work pretty well for me. Um, I might shift it around a little bit just to sort of really get it uh, towards the contour. I'm getting a bit too much on the top area, so um, I am going to sort of move that. So I think for this example, this is pretty good. Uh, I usually will tend to tweak it a little bit more, but I think uh, just for the purpose of demonstration and the interest of time, I'm going to name that Rim A2. And now we're going to go into uh, Photoshop and start compositing things. So usually what I'll do is I'll open up um, the beauty render, because if you open up the shadow, um, shadow render or the mask render, it's only going to register as uh, black and white. And once you start importing all of the other files into that uh, as layers, um, they're all going to they're only going to register black and white information. So what I'll usually do is uh, start with a beauty render, and then I'll just uh, sort of drag all my files while holding Shift uh, to sort of paste them in place. Uh, um, it's imported everything, right? What I want to do is right click and rasterize and uh, I'm going to delete the background layer and just uh, you know probably set it to black so uh, yeah we're, we're nearing the end of the tutorial now we're gonna just composite it and I'm gonna go very minimal for this one uh, probably gonna have uh, a bit of ambient occlusion uh, but I, we're, we're going to need to tweak this a little bit. So um, here you can see me going into levels, and I'm just sort of clamping the levels so that I don't get too much shadow around the upper areas. I just want them, um, you know, along the uh, areas where light shouldn't be bouncing. So something like that works pretty well. And um, this is the effect that we're getting, right? We already have ambient occlusion in our render, so it's it's only going to be very subtle, right? Depending on the form of your model. And the lighting setup you have, uh, you know, the effect could be bigger, right? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to colorize it. And uh, again, with subsurface scattering, you never have like purely gray shadows. So I'm going to go with a very red shadow here for now, for a start, just so I can see it. And uh, I'm going to go back to hue saturate and reduce the amount. Okay. So um, again, the ambient occlusion is set to a multiply layer. Okay, so it's a very subtle effect, but you know, uh, to me, it, it does make a difference. So I'm going to keep it there. Um, for this case, we don't really need the shadow layer. We kind of have enough shadows. We don't really need the um, depth layer either, right? Um, let's play around with the rims. So uh, usually, what I'll do is set it to screen or linear dodge. Um, linear dodge gives you a bit more uh, color. 
right, as you can see in here. So it's a pretty good effect. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I might tweak it a little bit, uh, but in order to tweak it, I have to see what the upper rim line is going to look like first. Okay, so again, what I like about having these in separate layers is I can tweak each of the individual lights, uh, like how you would tweak it in a, in a program like After Effects or Nuke. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is add the secondary um, rim light. So again, this is where uh, things are starting to really, uh, you know, pop, and you know, it's a bit of a strong effect. So I'm going to reduce it slightly. Right. But I do want a little bit of that white. Okay. Let's pr play around with the levels and really clamp up those values. Right. So again, the, that's the beauty of uh, having a lot of layers in Photoshop. You know, there's so much control you have over the final result of the render. I'm going to reduce the color for this one because uh, Linear Dodge does blow up the color a bit, so I'm going to cancel that by uh, reducing the saturation. So to Linear Dodge, and you can see, um, you know, the render sort of uh, starting to look much better now. You know, we have a, a good balance of some soft uh, falloff from the rim light and a much stronger uh, contour created by our second rim light. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, mask out the background. So the way to do that is you hold Alt and then you uh, click on the mask, right? And then you can paste whatever it is you want, just like you would paste on a normal layer, right? This way, we now have a, a nice outline around our render. And uh, I can change the background to uh, whatever it is I want with the, you know, with these gradients and whatnot. Okay, so that that is really um, it for you know how I light things inside of ZBrush. Nothing spectacular. A lot of the work um, is going to come with you controlling your passes in Photoshop to get the result that you want. Right. And uh, this is a front view, so you're not going to get any shadow information on the floor. Um, you would be usually getting that from the shadow pass if it was uh, in perspective mode. But for this case, I'm just going to paint in a bit of shadow on the floor just to fake the effect. And I'll put it underneath. And, you know, this is usually uh, something that works for me. So that's it for the tutorial, guys. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have any questions, just write it down on the comment section below, and I'll be happy to answer them when I have the time. Peace.